Hi, my name's Andy. We spoke on the phone. I'm going to here to look at the house. We'll look at the exterior of the home. You had some interior damage too. Can you uh, show me where that's at? Sure, come on. Okay, so it looks like you've got some water damage here. So tell me about that. Storm came through, it was leaking really bad. We noticed this starts stripping down the wall, it stained the carpet, got the TV wet. We removed a picture and it looks like there's some black mold. Yeah, you got some mold there. That picture is probably, you probably just need to throw it away, right? Yeah. Okay. And this TV got wet? Yeah. Okay. All right. And you got some staining on the carpet. Was that from these uh, weights that were sitting here? I think so. I think they got wet and then they rusted. Okay. Well, good deal. Well, uh, what I'll do is I'll do my inspection. I'll look at the interior first. Uh, then I'll go outside, look at the elevations, then look at the roof, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay, everybody. So, policyholder went over everything. We've got some TV. They got water on. It's not working. You've got this trim that's damaged. You've got some stained carpet. You've got some mold here. That was behind this picture. You've got some pretty bad drywall staining. And actually some of the joint compound is coming off and this bulldoze corner trim is cracking too. So that needs to be replaced. So let's do a diagram real quick of the room. I'm gonna start here in this hallway. Now I wanted to say here, even though this carpet runs continuous, this is going to be where we stop the carpet replacement. Because when you shut the door, that's where a natural break is. And there's a seam right there anyway. Now, customers typically want the house recarpeted, but since there's a doorway here with an actual door, then we normally just stop it right here uh, since it's a natural break. So I'm going to get my measure, my laser tape out. It's probably going to be about 3-3 three, three wide. Yep, 3-3. Three, three. Ten six. Spin this around. So 3-3, three, three, ten six. Do this little wall here, nine, three, oh wait, three, eight. I was looking at it wrong. Get this one, seven foot. Now while I'm standing here, I can get this measurement. Twenty-one, five. Okay, now it's seven foot, two, four, two, one. All right, so since, and you can look at this room and you can see the style of ceiling it is. This is called attic ceiling in Xactimate. So what we need is we need this measurement. We need this measurement. In Xactimate, it asks for a short wall and a tall wall. Well, they're both the same. And we also need this measurement here. We need the measurement coming straight down over to here. So that's the measurement we need right here. So I'm just gonna do this. So two eight. Okay, we're probably, I don't know, seven, 
eight foot ceiling. Five one and tall wall and short wall are gonna be the same. And the only thing left I gotta get, I don't think I got this. 16.4 is the width. So what we've got, you can see down here, where these weights were, it stained the carpet. Now, what I'm gonna do is not replace the carpet. I'm gonna do carpet cleaning. If that doesn't come out, we're gonna have to replace the carpet but at least we got the measurements. And this corner trim, these are kind of interesting because this bull nose corner, you have to have these uh, cut at like 22 and a half degrees, 22 and a half degrees here. But you can see how this wood has swolled. Swolled, swolled, swollen. Anyway, it swelled. And I know the people that own this house, so they're okay with me doing this. I'm gonna show you. Okay, so look at those nails. That is evidence of long-term leakage, or at least long-term moisture. But you can see right here on the edge, right there, you can see how that's dark. That um, needs to be replaced. This is MDF, which is essentially just sawdust pressed together. It stands for maximum, maximum density fiberboard, sometimes referred to as melamine. But uh, anyway, that needs to be replaced. So we're gonna replace this piece of trim, this piece of trim, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to fix this corner because it's like water has come down this. Well, you can even see, look at that, right here. That water trail comes all the way down. It's right there and it keeps on coming down. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to cut this drywall out here, probably up here, maybe get away with doing a repair there. And then we're gonna have to deal with this bulldoze. Now don't, <laughs> don't do this in a house that you don't, don't do this in a house that you don't know the people. I know the people. Um, and I'm, I'm actually gonna do the repairs so you guys can see what that looks like. I'm gonna get behind this wall and I'm gonna show you what that looks like because we've got a real mess going on right there. Now I, wanna, I want you guys to see what the back side of that looks like. Okay, so we're behind the wall now where the flue pipe is. So you can see you've got some mold there. which is not covered under the policy. And straight up, that's where the flu or the chimney chase is. Okay, right there is where our damage is. Some gross stuff. So we definitely need to cut that out. Looks like there's long-term leakage there coming down and running into this area here. This is not covered. Mold is never covered. Mold is typically not covered on the traditional homeowner's policy. These folks have insurance. I looked at the policy and unfortunately this TV right here is not covered. And the reason being is since it's a windstorm hailstorm, unless the storm creates a opening which allows the water to get in, personal property is not covered. Now coverage A, which is what this is, the building structure, that's covered. But personal property is on a named peril basis. That unfortunately is not covered. And 
I'll show you a picture of the, the fireplace, which is right above there. And as you can see, there's no storm created opening. One thing we're gonna have to do is you can see all of these walls are brown and there's really nowhere to stop the paint line. Uh, that wall, um, even though it's brown, it's not something we have to worry about because it's hidden by those uh, pallet uh, slats. <clears throat> so the trim though, we're gonna have to prime the new trim uh, and then put a top coat of paint on it, same here, and then put one coat of paint all the way around the room you can see it goes all the way around, so we'll be painting the baseboards all the way around. We need to have this TV detached and reset in Xactimate. The line description for painting does include stuff for like taking uh, regist AC registers off, light switches off, and that sort of thing. And we've got these ceiling fans. We won't detach and reset them because what they're going to do is just drop that that bezel down and then just paint around there and then put that bezel back up. And then we're gonna do some content manipulation and then we're gonna cover the floor. In a different video, I'll show you guys how to write the estimate. And then in another video, I'll show you uh, what the repairs look like because I'm actually gonna do the repair. But other than that, I will finish up my, my diagram and put my scope together. Then I'll show you what that looks like Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do my, I normally do my sketches. <clears throat> Slide this over here. So the room. I like this AccuLine clipboard. And I don't typically do this to scale. So I put door, let's put D for door. Window there, I'm gonna make a note. See, it got off a little bit right there. So I'm gonna do a music room. That's three foot eight. 21 five. 16 four. 19 one. What I normally do is just do a, a note as to where the water damage is. <clears throat> And then I start doing my scope. And what I do on my scope is I do ceiling, and then I do walls, and then I do floors. I do on these attic, these attic style rooms is I just do this. I just draw a overview shot of what the room looks like. Sometimes I try to bring my computer in here with me and just sketch the room while I'm here. I, that's the way I like to do it, but for the sake of uh, just showing you how I do this, I didn't do that. Okay, so eight foot ceiling, five foot one, and this distance from the wall to where the wall 45's out is two foot eight. That's the the measurement you're gonna need in Xactimate. It'll also ask for the short wall and the tall wall. These are exactly the same. <clears throat> and so let's talk about our, let's talk about our uh, scope. So we're gonna to have to paint the ceiling. That's the only thing we're doing on the ceiling. You could mask off the uh, ceiling fans. And I'm just making notes on here. This is not normally how I do it. I actually try to write the Xactimate codes out because when you, you do this enough, you're going to learn the Xactimate codes almost verbatim. And so you can just write it down on your scope how it's gonna be an Xactimate. Let me flip this over so we can talk about what we're gonna do. So ceiling, what are we doing on the ceiling? We're just painting um, walls. We got a lot going on on the wall. So we're gonna be removing and replacing drywall, half inch, and it's probably gonna be about two square feet. And so then we're gonna do texture. When they originally did the uh, drywall in the house, they probably brought in a splatter gun and just 
sprayed all of the rooms and then did a knockdown, but <clears throat> this texture, to repair it, you just do it by hand. So that'll be a hand texture. And then we're going to come back and paint the new drywall. So I'm just going to say like six square feet because you've got to account for the drywall texture where I feathered it out. And then on the wall also, we've got, we're going to paint the, we're going to paint the drywall and then we're going to paint the walls. And then we're going to replace the trim. The baseboards are five and a quarter. And then we're going to paint, and that was four, four feet, six inches. Then we're going to paint baseboards, four feet, six inches. And then we're going to paint baseboards, perimeter floor. And then we're going to detach and reset the TV. Is there anything that I need to add or subtract here? So on this wall, painting the walls, I'm just going to do minus the pallet wall. Remember, because we're not, we're not painting that wall because it has pallets on it. It did like a shiplap, so we won't need to paint that wall. So in our Xactimate code, uh, we'll subtract that out. And then for floors, we're going to do, I think it's PNT mass square feet floor. And then we're gonna do content manipulation. And we'll probably do labor, probably an hour, just because <clears throat> they can, we can move all the stuff to the corner of the room or in the middle of the room and then something I should have added up here clean the carpet so okay so I think we're good in the next video I'll show you all, you guys how to write the estimate now here's the uh, clipboard I was using it's AccuLines sorry that brought, probably sounds like nails on a chalkboard but it has these little grooves in there and what I like about it is it has the has a picture of all these roofs and gives you like what measurements you need to do the roof diagram and it gives, gives you some other construction unit of measurements calculations and so forth all right guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video 